The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So, hello everybody. Welcome to Oxygen Forensics webinar. Uh, my name is Tanya and I'm Marketing Manager at Oxygen Forensics. And I will be your presenter for this webinar. So, um, during the presentation or after it, so it will be a kind of for one hour, but I will leave some time to ask, uh, to answer your questions. So feel free to submit your questions in our webinar software and I will answer them in order. And this presentation is recorded, so it will be available on our YouTube channel in, uh, on our oxygen YouTube channel. Uh, I believe, uh, tomorrow. Yes. Uh, so, uh, okay, so I will start and uh, all your questions will be at the end, yeah? Uh, so, uh, at first some words about the company, yeah, Oxygen Forensics, uh, I'm sure you heard about us. So, uh, actually several months ago we celebrated 15th anniversary, so it's our company was founded in the year 2000 and at first we were specialized in kind of uh, home user software so uh, we uh, had um, we developed um, oxygen phone manager this is this was alternative to Nokia PC suite and uh, then we started to receive requests from our customers uh, to release a forensic version of this software so uh, we did it in the year 2004 so our forensic software is already 11 years old yeah uh, and we have offices in several countries, including the office in the United States and office in European Union, uh, with almost 24 hours support. So you are welcome all the time to call or to leave a ticket um, uh, just uh, with all your questions. Uh, it's quite clear uh, who our customers are. So you can see, of course, it's law enforcement and government agencies and institutions, corporations, um, military intelligence and private investigators, as well as big four companies like Pricehouse, Watercoopers, all over the world. So, And uh, some words about our flagship product in general, yeah, Oxygen Forensic Suite, because my talk will be, of course, based on our software and what we can do uh, to help you to extract uh, all data, including deleted and hidden data. So, um, Oxygen Forensic Suite is a PC software. You install it on PC and it allows to extract the data uh, from almost 10,000 devices. A logical and physical extractions included. It means that we support not only logical but physical acquisition, of course, for particular platforms. Uh, and uh, also we extract data from more than 600 mobile apps and this is a kind of separate topic today. Um, so we support all popular platforms um, like Android, like Apple iOS, uh, like Blackberry, Bada, MTK, Chinese phones, uh, Symbian Windows Mobile, Windows Phone and of course feature phones that actually have no operating system inside but so we support them, uh, so we support old phones like old Nokias especially because we were specialized in them some time ago. And uh, we have some uh, solutions how to bypass passcodes and how to recover passwords to backups. Uh, and, uh, well, we extract all the a kind of full set of digital evidence, of course, so including contacts, messages, calls and calendar and notes and uh, the whole file system and applications, passwords, geodata and so on. And of course, like any other forensic software, we offer you deleted data recovery. And um, after you extract the data, after you view it, of course, there is an opportunity to generate data reports in all popular formats like PDF, RTF, XML, and so on. Our XML reports are supported by NUX. I hope you know this software, or you, this company and, and their software. So XML reports can be imported in a new X software. And of course, we offer you extensive search and filtering capabilities and all the sections to uh, find required data. So this is a short overview. And now this is a, I think you know, this is a kind of workflow for forensic experts. It consists of three parts 
to extract the data, to analyze it, and to generate the reports after it. Um, so the more extraction methods, the more data sources you use to uh, extract the data, the more data will be available for you for analysis. I think it's clear. So we at Oxygen offer you uh, quite a lot of extraction methods and data sources that can be combined to receive a kind of a really full set of data as a result. Of course, we support live data extraction, so you connect via cable, yeah, via Bluetooth, and get all the data. But you can also import, for example, various backups, yeah? Uh, I think the most widespread is iTunes backup. So you can find it on the device owner's PC, laptop, desktop, in iTunes folder, at least one backup. Maybe it will be old, can be found. And maybe the data inside will be different from the data that is on the phone, yeah, because time passes, so you don't know what is inside iTunes backup, what is, uh, it can be really different. So we all the time um, recommend to import iTunes backup to see what was in this backup. The same with BlackBerry backup. The same can be done with Nokia backups if you by chance find Nokia phone and you will need to analyze it. Uh, so what else? We're also uh, allowed to import device images that are created in other forensic software. Again, uh, in many cases, I think almost all forensic experts use at least several tools yeah, to extract data. And so you can, you can cross, you need to cross validate, you need to, to see maybe some other forensic software extracts more. So you can import um, these images into our software and see what we can do with these images. And one more um, data source, it's now um, cloud backups, yeah? So when we uh, released our cloud, our oxygen forensic extractor for clouds last year, uh, many people were really doubted. They were suspicious if they can use cloud data, um, if they can use it as evidence. Uh, so now it's getting more and more popular to speak about it, so we support import uh, of cloud backups, and we were the first to do it, like iCloud, like Windows Phone, uh, cloud data. Uh, again, it's one more data source for you. Uh, and one more kind of real alternative for you, you can import call data records yeah, that I received from cell phone providers, uh, import and analyze connections between callers. So again, one more data source. Um, so this is a kind of uh, overview of what we can import. So you can see lots of Apple iOS images, yeah, including, again, iTunes, iCloud, DMG images, Android images, including Android GTAC, because now people speak a lot about GTAC. They take courses in GTAC. So we can import GTAC images. We don't do them, of course. Uh, you can import also an Android backups, Android zip, and so on. And also, you can import BlackBerry chip of image. So again, quite popular nowadays. And Windows Phone 8 GTAC as well. Yeah. So just bear it in mind. Yeah. So um, sometimes backups that you try to import can be encrypted. Yeah. Um, for example, the user in iTunes can create a password. Uh, to encrypt backup. So if you take this backup and try to import in any forensic software, you will have to enter the pass password. Uh, so we have a solution uh, how to find the password. So um, our Oxygen Forensic Password Analyst software uh, helps you to find passwords to iTunes backups and to Android backups and images. Uh, so it uses various attacks uh, like brute force, like a dictionary attack, and actually attacks can be customized. Yeah, And it also uses full GPU acceleration and distributed computing uh, so for you to find passwords quicker. Yeah, So uh, it highly depends on your machine, yeah, on your PC. Uh, so there is a solution for encrypted backups. So some advanced users really encrypt their backups because they know it's it's really safer. 
So um, some words about oxygen forensic extractor for clouds. As I told you, um, this is one more data source. And uh, at first we received very uh, doubtful reviews about it. So forensic experts really doubted that they can use it. Yeah. Uh, so it was released last December. Uh, this is a utility inside Oxygen Forensic Suite license. It's free at the moment. And uh, it imports data from several cloud services like from Google, from Apple iCloud, and from Microsoft Live, and from some social media services like Instagram, like Dropbox, Twitter, so you can see it on screenshot. So you import this data, and then you can save it on your PC in a readable format, or you can generate a PDF report. And um, in the upcoming version, you will be able to load all this data to Oxygen Forensic Suite and the kind of seed uh, together with other backups, like in a merged uh, way. Uh, so, and uh, of course, uh, well, at the moment, you need to go through authentication process. So you mean uh, it means that you need to enter uh, credentials to access these accounts so we don't break we don't find passwords but there is one good solution uh, you can you can find passwords to these accounts to cloud accounts in oxygen forensic suite so you extract the device or you import the backup and we have a special section in oxygen forensic suite that is called passwords and in password section, as you can see, there is in the third column, if there is a cloud icon, so it's a hint for you that you can use Oxygen Forensic Extractor for clouds to extract even more data. So you extract it, for example, iPhone or Android device, you go to passwords, you see this hint, and it means that you can extract even more from clouds because you know credentials. And it's really very useful because, uh, for example, Let's take Instagram, yeah? Uh, so if you take non-jailbroken device, I mean iOS device, iPhone, and use forensic tools, actually you won't extract much because photos, yeah, Instagram photos, they are not in iTunes backup. It means that um, you will extract probably account details, you will extract people uh, whom the device owner follows, yeah, contacts, but you won't extract photos. And you need another method yeah, to extract photos. So this method is in uh, cloud. Uh, so you can extract photos from Instagram using our cloud utility. Of course, if you extract a password for it yeah, at the moment. So this is the solution. And some good words about iCloud backups. Yeah? Uh, so as I told you, we can import them and decode them and fully show you the data. What is good about iCloud backups? Uh, as you can see on the screenshot, in, one, uh, in the cloud, there can be several backups. They have different dates. It means that several backups were made uh, on my screenshot for backups from one phone and they are all stored in iCloud and you can import them just in several seconds and see all the data. Again, uh, the size is different. It means that there'll be a bit of different data set in every backup. Moreover, if several devices were attached to the same Apple ID, you can extract all these backups of all these devices. Again, you need to know credentials, but as I showed you on the previous screen in Oxygen Forensic Suite, you can extract at least some passwords and you can use them later to acquire data from cloud. And some words about one more alternative data source. As I told you, it's called data records. It's a bit different, yes? Yeah? So you can receive these call data records from cell phone providers. Uh, mainly they are in XLS file, but it, it can be, they can have different, still can have different extensions, yeah, a bit different format. Uh, so we have a special utility again inside Oxygen Forensic Suite. It's not, a, it's incorporated in the software. Uh, it imports CDRs of any format and any size. Uh, so if you work with them, you know that, first of all, you need to map all the fields, yeah? So you can do it in our software to convert all CDRs to unified formats. 
And then you can analyze, like on the screenshot, direct links between callers. So you choose several phone numbers and you analyze links. Yeah, There will be no names because there are no names on call data records. So these results can be saved yeah, on your PC, in your report. Again, it's a kind of alternative data source because, well, well it will be a good addition to your um, just major extraction. So I end, no matter what extraction method you use, live data extraction, backups, cloud data, yeah, so you will see more or less the same data set like this, yeah, contacts, messages, calls, you know, calendar, file system, yeah, external and internal uh, dictionaries, user dictionaries, applications and passwords, uh, Wi-Fi connections, history, geo coordinates, and some other data. So, of course, all the data is important, but I believe nowadays forensic experts are, first of all, interested in applications. Yeah, deleted data in applications, actual data, but still applications because people prefer to use them to communicate, to navigate, to travel, even to do sport and so on. So, so you can see uh, on this small chart what happens in the world of mobile applications every 60 seconds. So actually thousands and even millions of different posts, likes, uh, and photos uploaded in every 60 seconds. So lots of data. And what we can do with applications. So um, just we are proud to tell that we really have support for more than 600 applications for four main platforms nowadays, Android, iOS, BlackBerry 10, and Windows Phone 8. And uh, what is particular about our support? <clears throat> uh, we support not only social networks, not only messengers and web browsers. I think it's clear that almost in every software. Uh, there is support for WhatsApp, for Skype, for Facebook, for Safari. But we also support <clears throat> travel applications, uh, finance applications like PayPal, for example, yeah, like lots of productivity applications and also even health applications. A bit later, I will explain why it's important to support even health applications yeah, and what they can store. So uh, we also uh, support decryption of secure apps like Snapchat. I think you, of course, you know all of them, like Telegram Messenger. Even Google Maps are not so easy as you can think. Uh, and our support, it means that you can extract really uh, lots of data. So you can extract account details, including passwords. You can extract contacts, communications like group chats, private chats, calls, and lots of shared data like people share me media files, photos, locations, contacts, yeah, nowadays. Um, cached files and, of course, deleted records can be also extracted and recovered. So, um, this is Viber, yeah, uh, how it looks in our software. Um, I. I can say that Viber is an easily extracted application, yeah, because nothing is encrypted. Viber has no password. So all the data, deleted and actual, is very easily extracted. You can find it on your own open databases and analyze it. So nothing, uh, at least at the moment, nothing difficult about Viber. But it's very popular, yeah? So you see all the data, directions, and photos, like on this screen. Uh, if we take Google Maps from Android, yeah? Uh, it's a uh, it's more difficult case because uh, Google Maps stores search, share history, uh, and also routes uh, in the binary files. So binary files, that means if you open them, uh, well, you need actually to use special tools to decode the data and to see it in a readable format, yet yeah, to analyze what is what inside. And actually, we were industry first uh, in the previous release to support extraction of search and share history and routes. 
And so we show them um, in a clear way, like on the screenshot, yeah. So it's again already a bit a difficult case for forensic examiners, yeah, and actually for forensic developers to decode this this type of apps. It's not only Google Maps; it's just I took the most, uh, I think one of the most uh, famous apps, yeah, navigation apps. Even uh, iOS users actually use Google Maps instead of Apple Maps. So as you can see, we can extract coordinates, titles, addresses, and uh, if you have internet, you can see a small map on the left sidebar. If you don't have internet, there is a button to export to Google Earth and to see all these coordinates offline. So besides binary files, there can be lots of encrypted files inside applications. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm, I think the most popular example here is WhatsApp Messenger. Um, it's on Android devices. You can encrypt uh, messages, put them in the backup. And I think you heard about this encrypt uh, algorithm. Uh, so WhatsApp uh, changes it, I believe, once in several months. Yeah. The latest is Encrypt 8, if I'm not mistaken. So it changes it, and all forensic software developers uh, decrypt it. So it's all the time a kind of a battle between ours and WhatsApp. So um, uh, as you see on the screenshot, we decrypt the data, though it takes some time, and show you already in, uh, decrypted. The same uh, Telegram Messenger, yeah, the data is encrypted, secure application, Kakao Talk Messenger, mainly it's popular in Asia, yeah. Snapchat, so very popular application, especially with teenagers. Snaps are quite securely encrypted, yeah. Snaps, I mean images that people share, they are encrypted. Uh, so we uh, recently we've added support for Snapchat, uh, and now we decrypt it too, though it's not an easy task. So um, what else? Um, many users may use or may have several uh, accounts to the same applications and they use them uh, on the same phone. For example, um, Skype Home, kind of personal, and Skype Office. For example, I have two Skype accounts on my iPhone. Some people use, for example, two Twitter accounts again office and home to Facebook accounts and so on, yeah? To Gmail especially accounts, to Yahoo accounts. So if you take the phone, yeah, um, and browse on it, you'll be able maybe to find one account that is active now, yeah? For example, you take my phone, there is Skype, personal Skype account, you see all the data, uh, but you even won't uh, know if if there is another account until you extract the data. So if you extract in our software, you will see all the accounts that were ever used because the information uh, about accounts and about the data that is inside, it's stored in the database. So you don't see it, but when you read the phone, uh, well, I, I'm not sure about other software, but our software extracts as many accounts as were ever used. And you see the screenshot of Skype and on the left panel, uh, account panel, uh, you can switch between accounts. So in my test backup here, three accounts were used and you can easily see all the data. Yeah? So you don't need to know password. Yeah? All the data is inside databases. Uh, so some applications can be password protected. Yeah, uh, for example, we just got used that WhatsApp is not does not have password. Viber does not have password. Many applications like Instagram and Facebook they have passwords, of course, but they uh, you enter them once and then you can open application and you don't enter passwords again and again. But some applications uh, they are quite secure. Uh, for example, uh, especially finance applications, yeah, banking applications, even travel, uh, especially airlines applications from airlines. So they're secure and they require password to be entered each time you open them. Um, again, it's then it's very good to use forensic software because like on my screenshot, I, I show you Flight Delta. So this is an airline, yeah. 
Uh, so it's, uh, it requires passwords, but if you extract the data, you see all the personal data that is inside. So sometimes we can even extract password to this application. So it depends on where it's stored. So again, you can bypass these passwords if you extract the data in the software. And um, there are also some applications uh, that uh, hide personal data. Uh, I don't know if you heard about them, but they have thousands of downloads yeah, in Apple Store and in Google Play. Uh, applications like Hide It Pro, like NQ Vault, like Private Photo Vault, and so on. There are lots of them. So you install them on your device and you set a password, of course. And then you can put in these applications the data that you can you need to hide from the phone. But mainly these are pictures, it can be videos, it can be messages and contacts. So you put them in this application, you hide it with pin code, and nobody sees all the data that you hide. Yeah? Again, very popular. But if you extract the data in Oxygen, for example, uh, you can see what the device owner tried to hide. Yeah? So it's not difficult. Uh, mainly databases are not encrypted. So on my screenshot, you can see pictures. They are quite innocent, so I now back up. Um, in many cases, you can even extract pin code yeah, uh, to, the, to the application. So that's how it looks. Again, pay attention because nowadays these applications are very widespread. And uh, also spyware, of course, yes. Yeah? So, um, uh, so the spyware, uh, it's hidden from device menu, yes. Yeah? So the person who spies installs uh, on the device and then uh, you, uh, hides uh, this application with certain um, key combinations. And then the spyware sends all the user data to the spyware server and the person who spies can see all this data just remotely. That's how it works. It's quite difficult to spy on iOS user because usually you need to jailbreak the device. It's, e it's much easier to install spyware on Android device. So we support spyware detection. It means that if spyware of course, only the spyware that we officially support. Yeah, not everything because we write special scripts for this. These are our own scripts. So uh, if support spyware is installed, you can extract, you can see a special spyware section in Oxygen and with some data inside. Yeah? It can be some logs that can be geo-coordinates of places where uh, the device owner was. It can be sometimes even the username of the person who spies. So it's, it highly depends. But again, it's hidden, but you can extract and see it in Oxygen. And some words about passwords. Yes, yeah? so of course, um, uh, it's good to extract as many passwords as possible from the device. What passwords can be? Of course, passwords to application accounts. Yeah, If they're available in databases, at least in our software, you will see them. Uh, also, passwords to, uh, that are entered in web forms. Uh, what I mean, um, so some people prefer to use their web browser on device to log in and use uh, applications in web browser. For example, I don't have Gmail application because I don't use Gmail often, but if I need to log in, I can use web browser for this. So web browser, save this data, and if you extract the device, probably you'll be lucky to see these saved passwords uh, in the software. Uh, also, um, passwords to uh, that are entered in applications. For example, now it's very popular to link applications. For example, you have Instagram and you can link Instagram to your Twitter or Facebook account. And when you post something on Instagram, a photo, the information about it uh, appears on Twitter and Facebook. So you link all these uh, social networks together. Actually, it's not so safe. And the passwords to all the social networks are saved in the application that links them. Yeah, uh, So I will show you. And also, uh, passwords can be extracted from iOS keychain file. I, I hope many of you heard about it. So 
it's a very encrypted file it's securely encrypted even the fields are encrypted here in this file it can be found only in iOS devices and it stores lots of passwords to applications to their accounts to email accounts and to Wi-Fi networks uh, to which the device was connected so this is a screenshot of password section and um, in service column it's the sixth column uh, you can see the browser and you can see links in brackets yeah so that's what I, I was speaking about that uh, you can enter some credentials in web browser and in brackets you can see links to to applications to which these passwords really belong yeah and uh, also you can see a bump application on the screenshot with the links uh, it means that bump application and this is the application to share data between phones bumping them um, so in brackets there is actually uh, the, the account that was linked in bump and password and um, account and password information belongs to the social network in brackets yeah because the device only linked Twitter for example and bump bump and LinkedIn so um, as you see it's not so secure and all these passwords can be saved in the applications and deleted data recovery yes yeah? so um, all forensic experts expect so lots of data to be recovered of course it's very important uh, so um, we can offer you to uh, a kind of two methods automatic and manual so automatic it means that all the data is recovered automatically when you extract the um, well when, when you acquire information from device like messages calls images and videos and documents and lots of applications data like accounts and contacts and chats well everything is possible everything is recovered and as you can see uh, all the main platforms are supported for deleted data recovery for iOS devices you can use even the basic classic method via iTunes backup and you will recover lots of data for Android we support Android physical dump in our software or Android backup these two methods will give you also deleted data of course physical dump will give you more yeah? And for Windows Phone and BlackBerry, it's better to import GTAC or chip of image, and so you will see lots of deleted data. Um, and there is one more method, manual carving for deleted records with Oxygen Forensic SQLite Viewer. Uh, so first of all, I will show you, that's for example, how uh, automatic deleted recovery looks like. You can see lots of pictures. All these pictures have trash bin icons. Uh, so it means that they were de uh, they were recovered from physical dump. So everything is very simple here. And uh, manual carving with Oxygen Forensic SQLite View. I hope again you heard of course about SQLite files. Yeah, um, they contain actually all the information, almost all the user information. Yeah, again messages and notes and calendar and applications data. Uh, they are used by all popular. Uh, mobile platforms Android iOS BlackBerry 10 and Windows Phone they all use SQLite databases so we have this SQLite view again it's inside analyst license yeah inside oxygen forensic suite it's not separate and it offers you for example uh, to uh, convert data to, uh, from various uh, from uh, various formats like Unicode and Unix and it offers you to create SQL queries. It uh, enables you to search the data and to generate to generate a, a PDF or XLS report. So that's how it looks like. You can see that you can automatically convert the whole column, for example, date column, to one of the formats. Uh, so the iOS devices usually use OS6 epoch time format for timestamps. Uh, Android devices use Unix epoch time milliseconds and so on and so all this data can be exported uh, you can search it and so on 
So this is a kind of manual um, search for deleted data because you can see some data in the yellow background on this screenshot with trash bin icons in the, sec in the third column. So it means that these are deleted records. Yeah, you can look for them manually if you need to validate. Yeah, so manually all the data is recovered from SQLite databases. And of course, uh, geodata yeah, and locations, they are very important evidence. Yeah? And uh, usually all forensic software extracts it from the same sources. Yeah? Applications, also photos and videos, exhibit headers of photos and videos because in all the devices, modern devices, uh, so uh, photos and videos are usually made with the information about timestamp and location. Also, for example, they can be uh, geo information can be extracted from Wi-Fi connections history. So you extract coordinates, and then you can receive maps and addresses yeah, of the locations, and you can view these geo information, uh, these coordinates on Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps online if you have internet. And you can use Google Earth to show them offline, yeah, if you don't have internet. And uh, again, I'm, I want to explain applications in more detail, geodata in applications in more detail. So what uh, geoinformation can be received from applications, yeah, in our software at least. So of course, shared. Uh, locations. Yeah, you can share your current location in WhatsApp, in Viber, in iMessage even. You can share in Facebook, for example, doing Facebook check-in. Uh, or you can even share it in Facebook Messenger and so on. So lots of applications nowadays allow you to tell your friends where you are. Yeah. Um, also, you can extract kind of uh, location search, yeah, for example, in Google Maps and Apple Maps. Uh, also, uh, you can extract um, the information from uh, travel applications, for example, from Booking.com, from Expedia, because when you search for hotel, when you book hotel, yeah, on uh, any of, oh, on like Booking.com, yeah, of course, um, the, there is an information about where this hotel is located and we extract coordinates so you can see where the device owner wanted to go, where he, he or she booked hotel and so on. And also lots of applications that kind of register current user locations. In many cases, people even don't know about that. So for forensic experts, that's very good. For example, let's take Evernote. Uh, so Evernote is a cross-platform application, very popular. You can use it on your desktop, you can use it on mobile device. So you can create notes, notes with pictures, noise, notes with voice records, and so on. So quite a lot of functionality, it's very popular. And when you create a note, it's created with locations, with your current location, yes. Yeah? So uh, I don't remember if you can disable it, by, but by default, so coordinates are inside the node, yeah. So we extract and you see it like this, um, node, timestamp, coordinates, and, that will, and there will be, of course, text field too. And also now it's very popular to use uh, spot uh, kind of health applications, yeah like Endem Wonder, Run Testic, and Run Keeper. So you do spot somewhere, and in many cases, people even post, they post their spot results on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, and why we support these applications? Because Not because, well, forensic experts can be interested in health or in sports, just victims or suspects do, just because these applications, they also store lots of coordinates. So as you can see on this small screenshot, there's a column, uh, coordinates column, there's timestamp column, and as you can see, the locations are recorded uh, every several seconds. Yeah. So actually, uh, if you open our software and timeline, for example, you will see a route, you will see the way how the device owner moved and where he usually um, does sport activities, well, goes in for sport. So again, it's quite a good evidence. Sometimes it's, it's useful to know yeah, where the device owner is 
um, and so on. Yeah, maybe it was his last way and so on. So uh, that is it. And in oxygen, you can build routes. Yeah, from coordinates. Uh, it looks like this. It was our test phone traveling from exhibition to exhibition. Um, so you can see all the coordinates on the left panel. You can choose uh, the coordinates. Uh, for example, you can choose uh, coordinates uh, for, I don't know, for one day, yeah, that were recorded uh, within a particular period of time. You select them and you see the device owner's way like this visualized. This picture, this is actually a map, a Google map. It can be saved on your PC, it can be printed. You can see photos like on this screenshot. Or you can switch off this function because sometimes it's just uh, it's not useful at all. So uh, that's how you can visualize the device owner's way uh, at the moment for one person. Uh, in future, it can be done um, in this um, kind of in this uh, nice way for several device owners too. Yeah, just to see common locations of both device owners. And so you extracted the data, you viewed the data, and finally you need to analyze it using some analytical tools. Yeah. Uh, so you need to find connections between data, between contacts. Um, you need to analyze data for a particular time. So we can offer you lots of analytical tools inside Oxygen Forensic Suite like timeline, aggregated contacts, links and starts, social graph, key evidence, and global search. Um, analytics can be done on one device, or it can be done on several devices that are put in the same case. Yeah? So in brief, um, our older section uh, timeline is five years old. It allows you to see all, all events of the device in one list, yeah? All events, I mean all applications events, all messages, all calls, yeah? Even photos with timestamps. So all this data can be viewed in one list in timeline. Uh, it can be sorted by date. You can find a date, open it, and see what happened on this particular date, yeah? including deleted records, of course, not only actual, but deleted. It can be sorted by activity with most active days on top. Yeah? Uh, sometimes it's useful to know, for example, when, where, uh, when two people um, uh, maybe communicated the most, yeah, maybe they plotted something, so you sort two devices with activity on top and see these active days on top for two people. Also sorted by contact, yeah, if you need to see events uh, for a particular contact only, yeah. Uh, aggregated contacts, uh, if you need to, well, right now, um, as I told you, people use lots of applications. Yeah, sometimes we communicate with the same contacts one day in Facebook, another day in WhatsApp, then in Viber, then in Skype, then send them just a, a plain SMS message with the same contact. Yeah, and if you need to view all these contact lists in one uh, in one section, yeah, and to work with all the contact lists it can be hundreds of contacts, as you realize. So you can go to aggregated contacts, you will see this list. And we also kind of simplify the job for you. Uh, we aggregate the same contacts from different sources into one meta contact. So on the screenshot, you can see Stefan Bremer. Uh, this is the contact that is aggregated. And in data source column, you can see that the same contact this Stefan was found uh, in phone book, in Kakao Talk, in Viber, in, in WhatsApp. So in several applications, and the device owner communicated with this contact in several sources. Of course, you can switch from section to section, yeah, and of course, but it will take lots of time. So you can see this meta contact in this section, and actually, if you click on the on the left on the name of or on the contact name on the left sidebar. Uh, you will see the list of all communications, yeah? So you don't need to go to any other section. All the list of communications for these contacts will be here. Again, meta contact, yeah? <clears throat> so that is it. And 
of course, links, yeah? So in all forensic software now, there are certain tools to find links between contacts or between device owners. So uh, actually, we introduced this section again several years ago. Uh, links and stats, it allows you to see, to reveal the closest circle of communication uh, for a specified device or devices. So on my screenshot, it's one device. Uh, the device owner is in the center, and you can see the closest circle of communication in the first in the first circle. Actually, there are only two circles in this diagram. So, and you can see that Barbara, yeah, uh, this is the contact with 144 communications in the small orange circle. So it means that uh, Allison, uh, Allison Kelly, the the device owner communicated with this contact most of all. And again, if you click on the contact, yeah, you will see all the communications between the device owner and the contact. So that, this is how you can reveal uh, the closest circle of communication yeah, after you extract the data. Of course, this diagram can be saved. So you can play with it, hiding contacts, displaying the number of contacts you wish, and so on, yeah, and exporting it even to PDF and uh, the file formats. And we also have social graph uh, to visualize complex connections between device owners or inside application groups. Uh, so you can see actually two device owners here, Stefan Bremer and Alison Kelly. And some contacts are in the center um, grayed out. They are considered to be common contacts, the contacts that are found in both devices. So both device owners knew these people, yeah? And we show them in the center. And uh, also uh, here you can see application uh, icons, at least WhatsApp and Viber icons. So we show you group communications here because nowadays even I, well, I communicate in groups in groups with my friends, so it's quite popular to create groups and applications and communicate in three, four, and even adding more people. So we show them uh, these groups to you here uh, on social graph. And again, if you click on the group icon on the social graph, you will see all participants and you will see what they actually communicated. Yeah, what they they could call each other, they can chat. So all this information will be in the inside these uh, application groups. And this social graph you can be customized. Uh, you can set a period of time. You can set from what data sources, from what applications to view data. It can be saved as picture. It can be you can set how many uh, contacts you wish to view here and also, and many, many other things, yeah, can be done with this social graph. And the last thing, yeah, search and watch lists. Um, so sometimes you don't have much time and you connect the device and you need to extract the data and to see certain results after extraction. So all you need to do, for example, is to find certain keywords. It can be, for example, some drug names, guns, I don't know, maybe suspicious phone numbers, names, and so on. But you don't have time to look through all the data. You need to find something particular. So in our Oxygen Forensic Extractor, after you connect device, you can create keywords lists, like on my screenshot, on my first screenshot. So I created several keyword lists. They are marked with different colors. Uh, so you can select, so in my case, I selected some words with, uh, connected with immigration and some, some words that I knew that I would find, yeah. So I created this keyword list. I started extraction, and when the data, uh, once the data is extracted, you press finish, uh, and the section watch lists is opened, like on the second screenshot, and you see all the results. Yeah. Uh, so it really saves your time, and as you can see, these search results are highlighted. And uh, data is found in all this. Uh, actually, uh, the program searches data in all the sections. Again, it's not on the basic sections. But like on my screenshot, you can see it's Viber, it's WhatsApp, it's Booking.com application. 
its calendar and it's also remember the milk application where the, the you can create tasks and notes too so that's how it works and of course we have a separate search section and again if you need to find only particular words particular phone numbers or even uh, credit card number probably a MAC address hash in the files or you need to use regular expressions of course you can go to search and uh, find required evidence um, using our search engine yeah so it's also possible so um, I think this is all for my presentation again I tried to speak about data analysis especially paying attention to applications yeah and to geodata and now um, if you have yes I see <laughs> lots of questions I will try to ask them in order so I le left some time um, can I capture and interpret accelerometer data as well um, well uh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's the first question like this. I will put it down, but at the moment I think no. Yeah, but um, I'm putting it down. Yeah, uh, I think we don't support it. Yeah. Uh, does collections and MTK chipset depends on the brand of the device? Um, no, brands can be different. Yeah, so if you uh, we support all MTK chipset phones. So it means that if it has MTK chipset inside, it will be connected and extracted because, for example, it can be based on Android. Yeah, as you know, it can be just a feature phone based on MTK. So they all will be extracted. And for MTK Android, we even have a special mode. Yeah, if you have our software, you can try. Uh, there's a special mode. You switch off the device, so it's switched off. You connect, and physical dump is extracted. So the device is turned off. It's very good because you can bypass password. Yeah, and you will extract uh, any device in switched off mode if it's MTK uh, Android device. So I hope I ask, answered your question. Can Oxygen read Lantern databases? No, I, it does not read. And we can actually import only XRY and UFET images, yeah? And actually, from time to time, we have such questions. Can we import some other images of forensic software? And we even try to contact forensic uh, software developers. I, I won't name companies. But they said that, well, they don't wish it, yeah. So we tried to cooperate, but they say they said that they didn't want it, yeah. I think it's quite clear. So they don't want to cooperate. So only UFED and XRY at the moment. Uh, how is iCloud backup able to import? Would you need the user's Apple ID and password? Yes, at the moment you need Apple ID and password. But as I told you, uh, sometimes you can see it in password section in our software. Um, so it depends, yeah. Sometimes you can see it if you extract, for example, iOS device. Then you can use these credentials to additionally extract data from iCloud. Uh, but at the moment, yes, you need to to have credentials. Can I run Oxygen on the Amazon environment? No, it runs only on Windows, and you can also run it on a virtual machine if you have Mac OS, but uh, only on virtual machines like, well, I think the most uh, the most well popular support, not, not this one. I can export Google Map data to KMS format to Google Earth, yes. So I told you a bit later that yes, Google Earth is supported. You can automatically pressing one button, you can import to Google Earth and this Google Earth will be opened for you with all the coordinates. Yeah. Uh, phone, is there any way to determine if a photo was shared? Uh, when a photo is shared, will the iPhone store a record of this in any particular database? Or is it application specific? Um, well, if uh, I think in applications, for example, in messengers, okay, let's take WhatsApp, yeah, it's quite easy to determine 
if it was shared because there is a direction here yeah? in the message there is a direction like incoming and message it means that somebody shared with you if outgoing direction and uh, and image it means that you shared image with somebody um, so it's quite easy yeah? in applications at least in our case it's, I think it's quite easy to determine if you go to file browser we have this section with all the pictures yeah uh, then there will be a link uh, if you select a picture there will be a link to the picture in the database on the left sidebar again it will show you from where the picture is taken yeah so if you are uh, interested in particular about it I can send you maybe some screenshots yeah um, so if you contact me but actually sometimes it's really possible yeah to see at least from what application this picture is taken and then you will go to application and you will see the direction so you will uh, understand if it was shared or or not what about LastPass app oh no we don't support it and actually it's the first time I hear about it I, I put it down so I will ask our developers actually it's not so difficult I, I think it's a week to to add support for application and actually in our software in application section there is a, a kind of an option to send requests so if you have our software and the application is not supported you press the button and support ticket is created and usually we all the time try to add support for application if it's a custom request yeah but uh, I will check this application uh, also what actions could potentially cause all photos to have the same last access date time would sharing all photos um, I'm not sure about last access but last modified it's quite easy it's when for example probably you synchronize with iTunes or synchronize with iCloud maybe timestamps uh, at least uh, for example when you synchronize contacts with iTunes uh, all the contacts will have the same last modified date it will be the date when they were synchronized so maybe it's the same with pictures yeah so again you need to check it yeah GTEC Android up to version do you recommend any GTEC device uh, well I can't recommend anything but yes I heard about Riffbox um, actually uh, all GTEC images are supported yeah as far as I know so if you create a GTEC image from Android it must be imported into our software I don't remember about any restrictions and any limitations uh, Snapchat, Telegram, auto destruction can recover. Um, uh, well, uh, actually, how we recover data from applications and how all people do it? Uh, they recover this data from SQLite databases, yeah, uh, including Snapchat and Telegram. So if the information is deleted, but this information is still in SQLite databases, we can recover. That's how it works, and not only in our software. If it's deleted forever, it can be like this, then um, you can't recover. So it depends. Again, uh, you can take two, well, the same two iPhones. On one iPhone, you will recover. On another iPhone, with the same iOS version, you won't. And with the same software, it highly depends. Yeah. So. But mainly it's from SQLA databases, yeah. Uh, what can you obtain from a device wipe application? Um, I'm not sure about the question. Well, if you mean if the device was reset to to default settings, yeah, so called, then it really wipes all the data, especially if we talk about iOS devices. So with Android, maybe you read this news that not all the data is deleted. Yeah, so we can recover something. Geodata, what about uh, Fitbit? Can I filter by geo region so oxygen will know what IP addresses are in a specific city? Um, well, uh, an interesting question. Um, at the moment, I think um, we don't offer this functionality because, for example, well, we have geo coordinates and we can receive addresses from them if you have internet. Yeah, um, if you sort probably by addresses, at least you will see the regions, yeah, the countries. 
uh, as for IP addresses, we extract them only from a particular database, but it's it's hidden. Well, from the latest iOS devices, for example, uh, it's not available anymore, so I'm not sure about IP addresses. They are not extracted. And as for region, again, um, I will put down this idea. Um, but at the moment, I, I think, no, yeah, so you can receive addresses. You can see the places, but how to filter, I'm not sure. Um, and as for Fitbit, again, I'm putting down, actually, um, as far as I know, there will be the lock with your questions, so I, I will work with them just and with our developers later. People are using spoofing software to make a fake caller ID appear on the re uh, recipient's device. Does Oxygen help work with this? Um, uh, again, it's a very interesting question. I think I'm not ready to answer it. Again, I will put it down and we will check because as far as I know, we never heard about uh, We heard about it, but we never thought about it, yeah? Uh, so fake caller ID. Um, again, we will try to look deeper in it. So at the moment, uh, uh, I think no. No is my answer. Does phone access to a social media account like Facebook, uploading photos, sending messages, if done on the cellular network, not Wi-Fi, leave any evidence artifacts on the phone on Facebook servers? Um, uh, well, you know, actually... Uh, I will maybe disappoint you, yeah, as for Facebook, for example, from iOS devices, actually not much data is extracted, yeah. Um, you need to take jailbroken device, uh, iOS jailbroken device to extract Facebook, or uh, with Android it's easier, you can extract just quite, quite a common data set. It will be account, it will be messages, and it will be contacts, uh, yes, and that's all. So. Um, and as for your question, I think there will be no more data. So if you are lucky, you will get just this this very common data set, contacts, accounts, and messages, yes? Yeah? So there will be no additional data and no matter what was used, yeah? Because this data is not in databases again, yeah? So it's not an SQLite databases. You will be lucky if you extract at least contacts and messages and accounts. So nothing like this and facebook is quite secure yeah so you can see that actually not much not much data is stored in, in databases yeah so you won't extract more uh, i think in the nearest future we will add probably uh, extraction uh, kind of remote extraction from facebook yeah cloud extraction from facebook maybe it will be there will be more data yeah but i can't tell you at the moment so from mobile devices not much data Hi, can you share this presentation, please? Yes, um, if you contact me, yeah, because um, uh, there are lots of emails. If you contact me, yeah, and actually the contact information for all of you is on this screen right now. Yeah, it's my slide. So there is the email address. It's my email address. You can, you, you can contact me for any information. There is the address. The, the site address and there is a phone number, but better contact me by email and I will send you a presentation, yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, some other questions, just a second. Um, I'm lost somewhere. <laughs> Uh, very good. Uh, how about data from WeChat application? Uh, yes, we support WeChat um, from Android and iOS. And uh, I'm not sure about the latest version. So what is bad about applications? So each time a new version is released, sometimes uh, you, we need to update uh, application support fully. So it means that we support Till what version, I don't remember. Actually, in our uh, Oxygen Forensic Suite, there is a menu, help menu, with the information about what versions of what applications we support. But we support here. Yeah. At the very beginning of the presentation, you mentioned Nuix. Um, when you were speaking, how would that work? Um, yes, we support Nuix. Um, so you export all the data, even deleted data, yeah, to XML 
file format so it's xml and then you can import this xml so no matter what's inside what is inside it can be pictures it can oh, pictures no it can be like deleted records and actual records you import this xml to new uh, and uh, uh, analytics tools and you see the data in new so we are kind of compatible yeah that's what i meant yeah uh, so we have this partnership so it's in XML file, yeah. You you export to XML in from Oxygen, and then you import XML to New X. Uh, a cell phone dumps the same as extractions. Can you explain process for cell tower dumps? Well, um, phone dumps. Um, well, in some cases they're even good than extractions, as I told you, because, um, for example, if we take uh, what we take, well. Uh, if we take Android, for example, actually maybe it's the same because you can, for example, create physical dump in our software from Android. So people consider it to be the best yeah, choice to create physical dump, to have phys uh, the whole file system and all applications and deleted records. It's okay. And you can import some Android dumps from other software or GTAC dump, yeah? So actually, I believe the amount of data will be more or less the same. But if you take Windows Phone, for example, yeah, so it's quite secure. And if you extract the data from live Windows Phone connecting via cable, uh, you won't get much data. You will get just basic data, uh, like oh, only some sections, yeah. But if you create a GTAC image of Windows Phone, yeah, and GTAC courses are everywhere nowadays, all the people are speaking about GTAC. So if you create this GTAC image of Windows Phone and import in our software, you will get much more data, yeah. So we'll get all the data, including applications and including deleted records, deleted files and videos and images. So it's better for Windows Phone to have a dump then to to extract, to, to run this live data extraction. So the same, for example, with BlackBerry. We support BlackBerry chip off. It's, it's much more complicated than simply GTAC. But chip off allows you to get access to deleted data, to more deleted data, to applications. So it will be better, yeah. Uh, so it highly depends, yeah. Um, but uh, it can be a kind of additional source of information, yeah, to import dumps. Uh, if a person using an iPhone 6 deletes an application such as Kik, will there be a traces of deletion of the application in Kik and timeline? Um, uh, first of all, we support Kik. So if it's installed, Kik Messenger is fully supported. <laughs> uh, if it's uninstalled, um, at least in previous versions of Oxygen, uh, not for all applications, but there was a record of this application in applications section, yeah? But this application had no identifier, no icon, so this uh, you can see traces, but I'm not sure that all the time. Again, it depends because, uh, as I told you, uh, almost all information uh, from iOS, Android, uh, this information is in SQLite. And we can't, well, sometimes in plist files, but in many cases in SQLite, and we can't guarantee what can be inside, yeah? It highly depends. Um, so can't tell you yes, can say uh, no yes, no, no, and no, yeah? Will Oxygen Forensic Report include cell tower in four? Uh, well, um, Actually, I'm not sure from what, from which database you can extract cell towers. I knew, I know one database. I think many of you heard about it, consolidated.db. There was a scandal several years ago with the Apple company. Uh, in this file, in well, actually, it was renamed after the scandal. Now it's called encrypted uh, a. Uh, .db. Previously, it was consolidated.db. So in this file there was information about cell towers. Actually, it was a very good file. Still, it's on the phone, but you can take it only from jailbroken devices, yeah, if we speak about iOS. Uh, so it's renamed to encrypted.db. Uh, you can see all the cell towers uh, that the phone saw 
around it. So it's a kind of, it's a history yeah, of all cell towers to which the phone was connected. It's very good database, but it's from only jailbroken devices. Yeah. If you take Androids, uh, these databases, um, they were also removed from, I believe, Android version 4 already. So actually developers care yeah, sometimes about user security. So uh, I think this was the only place, um, at least I don't remember the other one, yeah, where you can, you can see the cell towers. So um, and not many chances to see them now. Um, is oxygen generating hash values for pics and files? Yes. So actually for every entry in oxygen uh, forensic suite, so for, for files, for pictures, for contacts, uh, for, well, for every data, there is a hash column. You can choose uh, during the, uh, before data extraction, you can choose hash algorithm. So by default, it is H is HA2. It can be MD5, it can be some others. So we support up to five. So every file, every picture, uh, the hash is calculated, of course. I'm to go against golden hash value dictionary. How it generates from yes. Yeah, so you, of course you will see hash. Well, for sure. Do you require password in order to perform cloud extraction? So you provide a bypass. Uh, yes, at the moment you need to know password uh, to access cloud data. Uh, but we're searching and I believe in one of the next versions we will offer you some uh, some solutions how to bypass, yeah? So just because we uh, released this oxygen forensic extractor for clouds in December and uh, there were kind of uh, doubtful reviews, yeah? It was not accepted, so people said that it couldn't be used as evidence, we don't need it. But at the moment, so more and more people speak and they, more and more people are interested in cloud forensics and of course we'll continue. And so at the moment, you need to know passwords. But again, I told you that you can find some passwords from extracted device, yeah? So in future, I think we will offer you something more interesting, yeah? Is the anti-forensic erase all information? Can oxygen recover the data? Uh, no, as I told you, if you erase all the data, for example, on iOS, and we checked it, uh, if you delete all this data with some it can be a remote wipe. The data is really wiped, yes. Yeah? So all the databases and SQLi databases, they are really clean, yeah. As maybe you read this news about Android that even some this um, uh, all these wipe applications and all these wipe functions sometimes they don't work on Androids, and you can find some artifacts on Androids. So for iOS, it's really clean, yeah. Well. Um, so we can't recover it. Is there a skin tone filter for graphics? Oh, um, I think no, but we're working on it. Yes, yeah? so to to make our software kind of more user friendly in this way. So at the moment, I think the answer is no. What about cost? Well, uh, I can't um, announce any prices here. Yeah, I think, uh, well, because so many people are here. But if you go to our site, yeah, Oxygen Forensic Com, and if you ask for a quote, or you can ask for me for a quote in the email, of course, I will announce the price. But actually, um, it's quite affordable. And what is good, all these functions that I enumerated and I show on all our analytical features like timeline and links and starts and this cloud extractor and call data records and what else? Well, all these features, they are available uh, with the basic license. It's Oxygen Forensic Suite Analyst. So if you ask for a quote for analyst license, so it includes all the functionality. It's not separate utilities. It's all in one. Uh, so again, you can ask for a price uh, from me uh, in the email or from our support team on the site. Or you can call, yeah? Maybe it's really better. If you're in the United States, you can use this phone number. Um, and again, uh, you receive a license for one year uh, with lots of updates. Uh, and after one year, it works. It's not limited. You don't receive updates if you don't renew. 
Uh, you don't receive updates, but you connect phones, you extract data. Uh, only the phones that, uh, that are on the market after... Uh, <clears throat> All the new phones, yeah, they won't be connected, of course, but all the phones that are before expiration date that were supported before expiration date. So at the moment it's 10,000 devices. You will connect, you will extract the data. It's not limited, yeah. Does Oxygen use a dongle? Yes, of course. Uh, there are two types of licenses. First is internet-based, but uh, it means that you activate license via internet. Yeah, so you activate and then, then you can work offline, of course. And there is a dongle, so just USB dongle. You insert on the machine and you work. Uh, with it on any machine you wish yeah for example you can install on several machines use one usb dongle uh, it's for one user and and also there's a network dongle of course for 5 10 20 and 50 connections concurrent connections of course this license will be a bit more expensive yeah but if you are a big company uh, you can use network dongle uh, that is inserted on your server and so from 5 to 50 concurrent connections, you can enjoy them. But basic license, yes, it can be internet-based or USB dongle-based. Uh, and also we have uh, a rugged, uh, well, rugged kit, yeah? Uh, so it's a, it's a case, it's a rugged case, it's a rugged tablet PC with analyst inside already installed. Another copy, uh, there are two copies of analyst licenses, another copy on, on DVD disk for you to be installed on PC. Uh, so inside this case also there is cable set with all the cables and some instructions and I think this is all. So um, there is a kind of hardware for you to work in the field. Of course, it's the information is on our site. Uh, yes, longer works with virtual machine. Yes, right. So it's this is also on our site, yes. You have special discount for enforcement to renew license. Well, actually, license is renewed. Uh, it's 40% of the price. So uh, it's renew you pay really less for license renewal. And for people in the United States, we are registered for GSA program. So you can contact our support and there will be discounts, but only for the USA governments and military. Uh, again, the information is on our site. Uh, for other people uh, outside the United States, uh, usually no discounts for one license because it's not quite expensive, but so we can negotiate so again if you contact us. Yeah, it depends on many factors. But a renewal is actually 40% from the main price, so you can calculate it's not much. It's less than 50%. Uh, what is the difference between dongle and internet license key type? So, uh, internet license, it's a bit cheaper. Uh, it's for actually to, for desktop and laptop. So you can install it twice, for example, on two PCs. Uh, you install it and you need to activate uh, sending your hardware ID to our server. That's why it's internet. You need to have internet to send this information to register your PC because you can use only two computers. So you receive updated key code and then you don't use internet. So the internet is used only for activation, yeah? Just for us to activate two computers. And then uh, as for dongle, uh, you don't need to have internet. We ship the dongle via <clears throat> some like DHL or FedEx service to you and you install the software, you, the key code is inside dongle, you insert the dongle and you work. So it's offline, no registration, actually even unlimited number of computers, yeah, because you can install on some computers, use one USB dongle, so no internet connection. Um, Yes, you can. Of course, you can move. Yeah, uh, the license, internet license, is for two computers. Uh, but if you, for example, update your hardware or update your computer, you can contact us, and of course, we understand it, and we give you one more slot for registration. But um, actually, it's limited for two. But you can contact our support team, and we will give you one more slot. Of course, if it's not like 100, yeah, uh, then yes. 
if stand license uh, if I have standard license, is there a discounted price to upgrade? If I have free standard license, because actually all people can contact our support and they will receive free standard license. It's quite limited, yeah. I mean, it's um, you can extract basic data with it, but you won't extract applications. You won't have this analytical tools. Um, if you have free standard, you can't upgrade because it's free. So you need to purchase analyst. If you well, for certain reasons, purchased analyst uh, purchased standard license some time ago. Of course, you can upgrade. So you pay the difference. You pay the price difference, yeah, and you upgrade to analyst. I think it's quite simple. If it's free, well. Actually, there is one way. <laughs> if you have a free standard license, you can uh, subscribe to our webinars, yeah, certification webinars. Uh, the information is on our site and the webinar section. So you get it. Uh, you get as a result of these webinars, you get lifetime standards. You get 20% discount to order analyst, and you what else? You you become certified user. Yeah? You get certificate. So. If you want to have some training and to have discount to order analyst and to have lifetime standard, you can take our webinars. Um, can I buy someone else's expired directive licenses? Uh, well, <laughs> we don't have this practice um, to buy. Well. I'm not sure because all the licenses they're registered for a particular person and particular email address. Yeah, so um, at the moment it's not possible. Yeah, and by the way, um, just all people who are here, yeah, who attended this webinar, actually, if you contact our support, so we can give you a kind of demo license. Yeah, it will be a full analyst license for several weeks, so maybe for a month. Well, it depends. Yeah, it will be a full uh, analyst demo license to try to use it. Yeah, so again, you can contact us, and then you you can make a decision, and we can negotiate. Yeah, uh, every particular case. So expired licenses, uh, you can't buy them, I think. I have a business in my country. Can I have support from Oxygen? Yes, of course. Uh, yes. Contact our support yeah, and ask uh, the questions you, you wish. Yes. Um, so it depends on what support you, you're asking. Yeah, of course, uh, we can uh, discuss it. Yes, what type of support you can contact, yeah, I think uh, me or just general our support team and so it will be, I don't know, if you have business and if you, for example, train, yeah, uh, law enforcement, we can give you, for example, an ed educational license, yeah, to train, so it depends on what support you wish, yeah, yeah, we can give you brochures or, I don't know, any other support you wish. So, um, I think I managed to answer all the questions. Yeah, uh, I tried to be attentive. So, um, any other questions? Again, for presentations, contact me directly. Yeah, and for any other questions, you, you feel free to contact me directly. Um, well, it's written on the slide. You should see it. Yeah, so I. Just a second. Yes, you see it on the slide. This is my address, yeah. So you can put it down, yeah. So um, if uh, no other questions, then thank you for your comments, yeah. Thank you for your thank you. And uh, thank you for coming here and for the interest in our software. Again, ask for demo, yeah. Ask for demo on our site, not on our site, but you need to leave a ticket because it's not uh, available for, for download. Yeah, it's hidden. So contact our support for demo if you wish. And I, I wish you a nice day. Uh, and thank you. Thank you once again. Bye bye.